I made a free Pomni animation rig for Blender. Here's how to use it. So to download this rig, all you need to do is go to the link in the description below this video and click on the Patreon link you see there. You don't need a Patreon account to download this, don't worry. Just click on that link, scroll all the way down until you see this pomnirig.zip. Click on that file and your rig will start downloading immediately. After that, you're gonna have a .zip file that looks something like this. Uh, and all you need to do at this point is right click on the zip file and press extract all, then hit extract. Once that's done, you're right here, you're gonna have your Pomni rig. So just double click on this folder and open this blend right here. The only thing that is worth keeping in mind is that this blend file and this textures folder need to be right next to each other like they are right now. If they are not, the Pomni rig will not work properly. The textures will not load and it's gonna be annoying. So make sure to leave this blend file next to this textures folder. So I'm gonna double click on this to open this. And if we do that, we are going to have Pomni here. And you might've gotten an error saying something along the lines of, there are scripts in this folder. Are you sure you want to allow that? Um, and those two options like allow execution of scripts and you can even do it permanently. I'd recommend just enabling that permanently. They do that for security reasons, but uh, it's not really an issue most of the time. Just don't open shady blend files and you're good to go. Now I'm gonna start moving a little fast here, but by all means, if you get stuck or confused at any point during this tutorial, please, please check out my Blender Fundamental series on this very channel. I teach you how to use Blender and animate in Blender completely from the ground up, totally from scratch completely for free. So check out that playlist I have on my channel if you wanna learn Blender. So now that we're all set up here, obviously we wanna have textures here for Pomni. So to see what Pomni looks like in color, all we need to do is click this viewport shading right here uh, at the top right of our 3D viewport and set that to material preview. It's gonna take a little bit for those shaders to compile. Um, my computer's pretty fast, but your mileage may vary. Uh, and there we go, there's Pomni. So I'm actually gonna go to this viewport shading mode right here, this very last one, um, to render preview, because it's just gonna give us a nice little visually pleasing result. Another thing to keep in mind is if I go to a file, excuse me, if I go to this little blender icon and then do about blender, I am using version 4.0.2, which as of recording is the latest public release build of Blender. This rig is optimized for Blender 4.0 and above. You can use it, as far as I know, you can use it in Blender 3.0 versions. So if you wanna use it in 3.0, by all means do that. Just know that in the 3.0 versions of Blender, you're not gonna have these rig layers, which we'll explain in just a moment here. Well, how do we actually pose Pomni here though? Well, there's actually two different controller options available to you. You have the face rig right here, which you can control by clicking any of these controllers right here, or the buttons if you wanna call them that. Um, so you can select any of these right here and then press control plus tab to move you into pose mode. Now, if I start moving this iris slider, you're gonna see that her iris changes textures. Or if I move this mouse slider, she's gonna change her mouth texture. Or if I click drag blink here, we can make her blink like so, which is pretty awesome, right? But if I wanna move her body and not her face, all I need to do is exit pose mode by doing control plus tab once again, then click on Pomni and press control plus tab once more. Now I can control her body. So if I click on her hand right here and then press G, we can now rotate her hand, move it along like that. And if I wanna reset the position of her hand, I can just press Alt G, Alt S, Alt R to reset scale, rotation, and transformation respectively. So that is how we pose Pomni. We can move her eyes by selecting this little eye controller here and she is moving around. If we want a better idea of what we're doing, we can turn off our, uh, what is this called again? Show overlays, <laughs> I guess that's what it's called. Um, and we can kind of see what's going on a little bit better if we wanna do that. So that's how we pose Pomni here, but there are extra controllers on this model that you definitely wanna be aware of um, that are not visible by default. And this goes back to what we were just looking at earlier, which is this lovely, lovely menu right here called Rig Layers. So Pomni uses the Blender Rigify system. And in that system, you have this wonderful little user interface for controlling rig layers. 
Again, if you're not seeing this, one, make sure that you ran execution of scripts when you open this blend, and two, make sure you're using a Blender 4.0 or a blob. Otherwise, you're not gonna see this menu. And it's really handy, so you're probably gonna want this. <laughs> so yeah, by default, we have her hair plus hat controls visible. We can turn those off if we think they're pretty distracting. We can turn off the face uh, controllers, which, you know, that gives that gets rid of a huge amount of controllers. So we probably want that. Torso controllers, torso tweak controllers, fingers, finger details. Uh, I'll briefly explain how some of these work. We'll just make all of them visible. <laughs> just to briefly give you a little explanation what's going on here. So these are how you control the fingers, are these little sticks. So you can select all these sticks to rotate them. And if you want to curl them in, you can press S to scale. So now they're all curled in at one time, which is really awesome. You can select this bone right here, which is the palm bone, and then press R to kind of move all of her fingers, well, most of her fingers at once on the palm of her hand, which is really cool. Same with the thumb here. You can press scale, rotate it, move it along very intuitively, very quickly. And I'm going to reset all of these by pressing Alt-S, Alt-G, Alt-R. And we have auto key on in the scene by default, so we don't have to worry about you know, placing keyframes by hand or anything like that. And so this other one right here, we're gonna see if we turn on torso tweak. There's this massive bone right here. This is her unicorn horn, which we can't actually see right now. We'll get to why that is the case in a second here. But this torso uh, face tweak gives us a bunch of extra controllers for her face. So if we press G, and then Z, oh, not Z, Z, uh, Y. If we twist G and then Y on this bone that is visible only when we have our face tweak enabled, for example, that will make it so that we can control her, like, I don't know what to call that, eyes, crow's feet, I guess? <laughs> so if you want her to look super distraught and maybe pissed off, this is a really fun one to use. Ah, uh, press this one, because there's also two of them, so if I press Y, I'm gonna Make this one visible, we can rotate it like that. And look at that, she looks tired <laughs> or something. We can also, with the uh, just the default face bones enabled, we can move these eyebrows around. And sometimes in the Digital Circus show, she doesn't actually have visible eyebrows. So you can literally just like move those inside of her head. And you're gonna see that, oh, it still looks like Pomni because she actually doesn't have those visible a lot of the time in the show, which is pretty interesting, right? Um, so that's that, uh, right here is the controller for the mouth. So if I rotate this, we can rotate this completely two dimensional texture of a mouth along her face. If we press this bone. And if we want to change the size of her mouth or adjust it further, there's this bone right here where we can rotate it. We can scale it. So if we want it to be bigger or smaller, all that fun stuff. So these are super, super useful to have. Um, Obviously, these are just bones for her hair, which is visible by default and had hair group. So we can rotate those around, rotate these around. And yeah, there's also these bones right here. So this is the eye squash adjust bones. And these are probably my absolute favorite on the rig by far because you can do some really crazy cartoony stuff with these. So if I rotate these, you're going to see that we can actually change the entire position of her eye, which, you know, that's cool and fun on its own. But we can also press S to scale this bone, which you probably don't want to do like that. But if you scale on like, uh, let's say the X axis, you can make it super wide or you can make it super tall, like she's super surprised. So I can do like crazy, uh, let's scale it on this axis. You can do really pushed cartoony stuff like that. And if we went to her face, for example, and made this like her iris is super tiny. She looks real surprised, right? <laughs> you kind of have to play with it so you don't get that weird clumping up the bottom there. So I'm gonna rotate this, and scale it back a little bit so there's less of that. But that's super fun. And now I can like raise her eyebrows and rotate them like so. That hide overlays and look at that. She's terrified. <laughs> so lots, lots of super expressive, fun controllers on her face here that I'm very happy with how they turned out. Um, and yeah, to rotate her head, you're actually selecting this bone right here. So that's how you rotate her head and everything is gonna fall along as you'd expect there. You can still move her eyes using this bone. 
Um, and yeah, I'm gonna actually reset all of these though by pressing A, control, Alt S, Alt G, Alt R to reset the rotation location scale. Um, she also has little adjustment bones here in her, I believe, torso tweak. Yeah, torso tweak section for moving the balls around. I don't know what to call those, the pom-poms, I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna call them balls. Um, there's also like wrist hoop adjust bones because these can look a little funky sometimes. So you can adjust these to your heart's content by using the arm tweak rig layers, which are really handy. Um, so you can rotate this around like that. And yeah, that is basically what you need to know about the rig layers. You can also switch all these bones to FK, but I don't want this video to turn into a Blender Rigify tutorial. Again, check out my full tutorial series if you wanna understand stuff like that a little bit more in depth. And again, if we want to pose the face, we do have to press Control plus Tab, then select the face controllers, and then press Control plus Tab again. If you wanna adjust and pose and animate both at the same time, you actually can do that by clicking the Pomni rig, then shift clicking this controller on the face, then going to pose mode either up here by going to pose mode or pressing, or pressing control plus tab right here. Now we can actually adjust her face and her body at the same time, which is pretty useful. So yeah, we talked about how to download the model, how to extract the model, how to change viewport shading modes, how to pose the model and the adjustment bones and rig layers you see here. The only other thing I think is really important and needs to be talked about, I'm actually gonna reset this because it's bothering me. Uh, let's put those down, there we go. Um, the only other thing that I think is super important to talk about is performance because this model by default is a little heavy to animate. You might notice a lot of lag as you're animating with this model. So to reduce that significantly, I would highly recommend you go to the render tab right here and go to this option right here. And I actually might have this enabled by the time you're downloading this by default, because it's really important. This is a little option called Simplify. Now, if we enable this option, Pomni gets chunky, you know? Uh, like if we, <laughs> if we turn this off and turn this on, you can see that, oh my gosh, she's turning into like a, a PS1 game model. What's going on here? Well, thing about Pomni in general is that she's a little heavy. She's got a lot of polygons, right? And by using Simplify, we're turning off subdivision modifiers we have on her model in the viewport. So if you render this out, you're not gonna see it like this. Um, but this is really, really helpful when you're animating uh, to use this option because now if I move her limbs around, the frame rate I'm getting in my viewport um, is literally, it's like three times more. It's such a huge win for performance. So especially if you're using a lower end GPU or a laptop or something like that, highly, highly recommend you use the subdivision, I mean, simplify modifier and set it to zero for max subdivisions. Um, and I would also highly recommend you do not just append Pomni into another scene because there's a bunch of settings in the Splendor scene that are set up highly specifically to make this rig look as good as it possibly can. So if you're just making an animation with Pomni, please just open the blend file. It's gonna save you a lot of time um, and it'll look the best it possibly can. And this is an EV rig, so I wouldn't recommend using cycles. I'm pretty sure cycles would work, but not super well. <laughs> so uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I forgot to cover something. So in this Pomni model, you might've noticed that she has a unicorn horn and blush and stuff like that. How do I enable that? Well, if we expand our Pomni model right here and then go to this bonus section, that's how you do that. So by default, she has anger, which is right here. You can see that right there. And I'm gonna turn off all of our rig layers except the face tweak bones, because that's how you adjust these little bonus expressions. Um, so we can move this around if we want to. We wanna make Pomni angry. Um, I'll turn off Simplify for now so she looks better. Uh, <laughs> then we have blush right here. So this blush, just makes her blush if you want to do that. And if you want to animate any of these, I would recommend just scaling them to zero and then scaling them back to one when you want them to appear, right? Or just have them enabled at all times if you want to do that. There's also the cane sensor bar right here. So if you want her to swear or do something goofy, you can enable that, which is pretty fun. Um, and, you, and that's just a prop. So you can just select that and move that around however you like, unlike the rest of these. Um, this is her iconic unicorn horn, which actually has a controller bone in the face tweak bones right here. 
So I can like rotate this around and scale it if I would like. So that's pretty fun. Got her iconic unicorn horn she uses so much in the first pilot episode. Everyone loves it. Uh, if I go to sweat here, uh, I'll just enable both of these. They're just sweat bones. If you want her to look nervous or concerned, we can just move these around by pressing G. And now she's sweating. <laughs> Hot sweating. But that about covers it. That's how you use the rig. That's how you download the rig. And please check out the tutorial series I have on this channel for animating and using Blender completely from scratch. So download the model below and have an awesome, awesome day. I'll be seeing you around. Congratulations on finishing this tutorial. It might feel like a small step, but you're now one step closer to animation mastery. And if you want access to an exclusive Discord community, exclusive rewards, and help ensure that I can keep making tutorials for you just like this one, check out my Patreon. 